What's up guys, Chris here from Vogus Prospecting. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you're an old hat, welcome back. I'm out here today with the Mine Lab Equinox to do a little bit of metal detecting. We might find some predecimals, we'll probably find some spendables, we'll definitely find some ring pools, and then I'm gonna go home, turn into a mad scientist, and try and show you guys how to clean coins using science. I've never done it before, so if I don't burn the house down, it'll be a success. Let's get swinging. The problem with the Equinox in Australia is all the target IDs are super close to each other. So that one cent right there felt like it was going to be a really good coin, but it wasn't. And that has to be my number one complaint about the Equinox is that seriously, the target IDs in Australia are stupidly close. Like it's very, very difficult to know exactly what you're digging because so many targets overlap. And I think that's a really big oversight on Mine Lab's behalf. I mean, you look at the, the target charts for other countries and they're fantastic. They're really, really spread out and very easy to understand. In Australia, they're not. Um, you know, I love the machine. It's very good. It is very intuitive and you do know when you're on something good, but sometimes it's hard to tell exactly what that good thing is going to be. I finally found something worthwhile. Have a look. Is that a dollar in your hole or are you just happy to see me? How good would it be if it was a muley? I don't think it is. Nope. Oh well. That's still cool. One buckaroonie in the hole. I spy with my little eye some oak trees and oak trees are always always good for finding stuff because they take forever to grow and usually people don't muck around with them I've spent about an hour looking around and I've dug so much rubbish. It was a ridiculous amount of rubbish. I pulled out probably ooh, 30 or 40 pool tabs, a lot of old cans and bottle tops and bits of junk. And for my efforts, I got a grand total of a dollar and 15 cents, of which five cents I can't spend because it's of old currency. <laughs> That's all right. What we're gonna do is go home, get this silver coin and show you guys some science. This is the florin that I dug up yesterday and isn't it in magnificently terrible shape? It's a 47, I thought it was a 42, but it's a 47. And it has probably the worst corrosion I've ever seen on a silver coin, period. Now, even though that's the worst corroded coin I've ever dug up and it's a big silver, it gives us a really unique opportunity to try a scientific method of cleaning silver coins. But first, let me run you through a couple of other things. These, these are the silver coins that I've picked up over the last couple of months, um, just detecting in and around the area. So there's a florin. There is exactly the same sort of florin. It's a 57, so it's 10 years newer, but you can see the difference, like a massive difference between that and this. They're the same exact coin. Um, and then we've got, we've got older ones from the 1920s and 30s and 18s and all sorts of stuff. So you can see that silver holds its luster uh, very easily. These haven't been cleaned. I've got some that have been cleaned. This is my coin album. Now this coin album is filled up with all the coins that I found around the northeast and up on the central coast and a few other places. And some of these I have cleaned. Now yes, I know that cleaning devalues some of these coins, but I always check for Keat eights before I do it. And remember that I'm not a collector that buys them. I just find these out of the ground. So most of them are toast anyway. And what I like to do is show them off to friends. So a shiny coin is much nicer to show off to a friend than one that is being destroyed and, and all sorts of stuff. So we've got, you know, a couple hundred coins there. And this is one that I've cleaned. Now, 
The way that I clean these sort of coins is quite simple. I use a pencil eraser. Now, a pencil eraser on a silver coin will make it look brand new, just like that, in just a couple of seconds. It does not take long at all. And it's stupidly cheap. Everyone has them lying around and they're very, very easy to use. But today I want to use the most scientific method. Now, this method came from a lot of prospectors who have told me, or metal detectors, should I say, who have told me about it. And they call it electrolysis, even though the process doesn't use electricity so it can't be that it's got to be something else the idea is that you put water aluminium foil and bicarbonate soda in a frying pan and bring it up to a simmering temperature which is probably around 70 to 80 degrees when you do that it causes some sort of chemical reaction when you dump your tarnished coin into that solution and it detaches the tarnish and probably some of the silver and it either attaches it to the aluminium or suspends it in the solution where the bicarb is I don't know how it works and this is the perfect coin to try it on because it is so ruined already there's no bringing it back so without further ado let's go do science It must be said, I don't know how much bicarb to use, how much aluminium, how much water, how long for. So we're just going to put this on time lapse. I've had it in there now for about 20 minutes and there's all sorts of aluminium foil and whatnot floating around. I've never seen aluminium foil disintegrate like that. so. But it's just different. I, I fully expected to see something come from the coins. I haven't seen anything change in the coins uh, other than it leaving occasionally a dark patch on the aluminium uh, when I moved it around. So we'll pull them out, uh, give them a scrub with a toothbrush, I reckon, and we'll see what's, what's what. The weapon of choice for any detectorist. Oh yeah, there you go. So some of that scale is coming off. You look at that. They've got a big black hunk of it just there. Well, the floor in itself, even though a little bit of that plaque came off, uh, not tons of it did. It's, it was never going to clean up nice. That's why we experimented with this coin. Most of the plaque came off the back here. Uh, it got a bit, but it still didn't bring it back to its silver silverness. It's just left a nice sort of grey sheen over the top of it. The good thing is, I didn't burn the house down like I said earlier. I've done well. I might have to scrub that frying pan a bit, but that's about all. This coin did not come up much better. I mean, big hunks of black scale did come off it, but none of the silver was revealed underneath it, and that's to be expected with just how cactus this thing is. If you were using this method on other coins that weren't as tarnished, I think you would have better results. But then again, I would rather use a pencil eraser uh, because it's faster, quicker, easier, all that stuff. I'll leave a link in the description to the video where I actually used a pencil eraser to clean a whole heap of coins and you can see how fantastic they do turn up. Big thank you to Ron Hayden for that because he put me onto it. If you haven't already, check out my other channel, Challenge Chris. This is where I do a whole heap of behind the scenes things including some of the filming techniques that I use and some of the other things I get up to when I'm not out prospect. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and a subscribe if you will because that helps me grow the channel bigger and better for you guys. All right, I'm gonna go throw this in the dud pile after after maybe attacking it with a razor to see what it's like. I hope to catch you out there sometime. Peace and I'm out.